Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, the Penobscot County Court heard arguments for the retrial of a New York man convicted of the murder and assault of two men in Bangor. Our Devin Dagnall starts us off tonight. In 2017, Robert Hansley was convicted for murder and elevated aggravated assault. He was sentenced to 25 years to life. It was concluded that in 2015, Hainsley was involved in the murder of Robert Kennedy and the injury of Barry Jenkins in a Bangor apartment on Center Street. Hainsley has now requested a retrial. In his appeal, Hainsley argues that there was insufficient evidence to support his convictions and that the jury was misled. Hainsley now claims that the shots he fired were in self-defense, saying that the Center Street shooting was a kill or be killed situation. He also stated that his original defense attorney did not direct him to claim self-defense. Robert Ellis, the state prosecutor, argues that Hainsley's new defense does not align with his original and is even, at points, in conflict with it. The best defense they could come up with, this defense never came up prior to, prior to trial. It came up after the no decision was made today. However, the court says a decision will be rendered within two weeks as to whether Hainsley will receive a retrial. In Bangor, I'm Devin Dagnalt, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. Two men now face robbery and kidnapping charges after an incident in Bangor last night. Bangor police say around 9.45 Tuesday night, officers were called to a residence for a report of a male with numerous facial injuries holding a firearm. Officers arrived and after turning over the firearm, the male victim told them he'd been at a residence on Court Street with his girlfriend when two individuals arrived and physically assaulted him and cut him with an edged weapon. He said he and his girlfriend were then held at gunpoint and locked in a bathroom. Police say the male victim was able to gain control of the handgun and escape the residence by jumping out a window. Officers were later able to locate the female victim. Both were transported to a local hospital for treatment of minor injuries. As a result of an investigation, 41-year-old David Bennett of Bangor and 28-year-old Kanaya Sakabasin of Pleasant Point were both arrested and charged with robbery and kidnapping. They were taken to the Penobscot County Jail and are currently being held where they are, where they are currently being held. Maine State Police have arrested a suspect in a 26-year-old sexual assault cold case. 56-year-old Jason Follette of, Gold, of Gouldsboro was arrested without incident Wednesday on a local pier in connection with the 1996 sexual assault of a Hancock woman in her apartment. The alleged victim was 21 at the time of the crime. She is now 47 years old. Evidence collected from the apartment at the time was processed and an unknown male DNA profile was recovered. Through advancements in DNA testing and genealogy over the years, as well as other detective work, police were able to identify Jason Follett as the suspect. He has been charged with one count of gross sexual assault and was transported to the Hancock County Jail. Other charges may be pending. Well, a warning if you're looking to add a four-legged friend to your home. Sanford police are investigating a puppy scam on Facebook. They say a buyer will send money for a pup and arrange to meet with the seller to pick up the dog. The seller gives an address, and while the, the, that address is real, police say the people living there aren't actually selling puppies. The scammer then stops responding to the buyer, and the victim is out of their money. It's always really, really important to pay attention to things that you're buying online. You know, from noteworthy, you know, uh, sellers such as Amazon, those are generally a safe bet. But when you're, you know, grabbing ads through social media or any type of other media like that, you know, before you put any kind of money down or any kind of deposit, uh, make sure that you can physically uh, either see or touch the item that you're looking to buy. Sanford police didn't share the address that's being used for the dupe uh, and police say don't send money for anything without physically seeing what it is you wish to purchase. The U.S. Department of Labor today recognized 835 employers from across the nation for their commitment to hiring veterans. In a virtual event held at the department's headquarters, Labor Secretary Marty Walsh celebrated the business's commitment to employing veterans in a variety of industries. You are employers, large, medium, and small from every corner of our country. Uh, but you have all of one thing in common. 
You have proven your commitment to recruiting veterans, hiring veterans, retaining veterans in your organizations. Well, among the businesses recognized were Penobscot Job Corps Center in Bangor, General Dynamics in Bath, and Dead River Company. Well, it will be next week before voters get the results of the Congressional District 2 race between Democrat Jared Golden and Republican Bruce Poliquin. Although Golden is currently in the lead, the Secretary of State says the ultimate result will be decided by rank choice voting. Our Jody Hersey shares more. It definitely looks like this race is going to rank choice voting tabulation. We met with Maine State Police this morning. We have a plan in place for retrieval of the ballots and memory devices from more than 300 municipalities in CD2. Remember, some of those are very small uh, and pretty far away from Augusta. With neither candidate receiving 50% of the vote, Maine's ranked choice voting will ultimately determine whether incumbent Jared Golden or challenger Bruce Poliquin will be the next congressman for District 2. No, this is really close. This is one of the true swing districts, districts in the country, about 25 of these districts in the country. This is very close, yeah. We'll see where it all goes. I'd like to say he's a workhorse, not a show horse. And, and the, the citizens of this district really appreciate that. Secretary of State Shanna Bello says both candidates, their political parties, and the media will be invited to Augusta when the ranked choice voting is tabulated. For people who voted for Bond first and then had a second choice of either Golden or Poliquin, we are going to be reviewing that second preference, and those ballots get reallocated to Golden and Poliquin according to voter choice on those ballots. Bellows says Mainers will know who will be their next congressman for District 2 next Tuesday. In Bangor, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22. Well, meanwhile, a recount has been issued for the Ellsworth City Council race. The recount will be exclusively for candidates John Linehan and John Stein, according to city treasurer Tony Dyer. The initial count showed John Stein winning the third and final seat by a margin of 56 votes over John Linehan. The recount will take place After tomorrow closed, at 10 a.m. in City Hall. It will COVID be broadcast live week. on the City of Ellsworth Ellsworth's city Facebook Hall, page and YouTube channel. Administrators are considering whether to rebrand or even cancel the long-standing tradition known as Main Day. The event was introduced by the university in 1935 to promote volunteerism and campus-based community events. However, the university's president says in recent years, student behavior on Main Day, particularly during off-campus parties, has caused numerous public health and safety concerns. The uh, commitment to service, the commitment to giving, the commitment to making a difference in our community, all of that needs to be preserved. And at the same time, we have to be attentive to issues of safety, health, and the well-being of our community. The Faculty Senate introduced a motion to hold classes on Main Day this year should the university cancel or make changes to the event. The discussion was tabled before any decision was made. There's no doubt there'll be definitely some strong feelings on both sides of that issue. Absolutely. It sounds like they want to uh, wait to hear more from students as well before they make that final decision. All righty. Well, let's uh, take a look outside, see what's coming weather-wise. We're definitely experiencing some, of those, experiencing some of those cooler temperatures now. Yeah. All right. So let's see what's coming our way with the first look. Thank you so much, Beth. Our first weather is brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Oranoa, Maine. All right, so temperatures were chilly outside today. I had to actually put on my jacket. That's how chilly it felt. High temperatures only in those upper 40s, even a couple of low to mid 40s up north. But same thing by the coast. Look at Bar Harbor and Rockland coming in with those mid 40s. A little bit of wind definitely felt much, much cooler than that. But the morning was a lot colder. Temperatures in the 20s, mid 20s at that here in Bangor. So it definitely felt cold. Winds right now blowing mostly from the south at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Not a big deal, but still with those cooler temperatures in the area, it is feeling much, much cooler than that. And because of the wind, we do have some small craft advisories in effect until 7 a.m. on Friday. So be careful if you are by the ocean waters. And later on tonight, though, temperatures will continue to cool off into those upper 30s. Beth? 
Alrighty, Conrad, thanks so much. When we return, we'll take a look at the results of yesterday's midterm elections. We'll have all the numbers and much more as Fox 22 News at 10 continues. Interest rates are on the rise and making waves in the real estate market. Buying or selling? You need a navigator. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, dot realtor. Now you can buy a certified pre-owned vehicle with confidence at every turn. Meet Ford Blue Advantage. Browse our massive inventory online anytime. Then check out our vehicles in person at your Ford dealer. See, touch, drive before you buy. And get a certified inspection, a Ford-backed warranty, Carfax report, a money-back guarantee, and 31,000 factory-trained technicians to service your Ford after the sale. Ford Blue Advantage. Certified pre-owned vehicle buying built for you. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. It's Battle of the Ages. These old geezers better work. This old guy's here to play. This is a joke. Hell's Kitchen, Battle of the Ages, Thursday on Fox. Homes are selling in a single day. The real work happens well before. I'm Holly Taylor, and I have the expertise to guide you through your home improvements. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, Dot Realtor. The dust is still settling on a busy election night coming up on the next Good Morning Maine. We'll have the latest results. We'll also meet this week's Pet of the Week, and we'll have some special guests in the studio to talk about a new Cider and Cheese Festival coming to Ellsworth. We'll have all the tasty details on your next Good Morning Maine. Please join us. Welcome back, everyone. Moving on to our uh, election coverage, we're going to take a look at some state races and local referendum results. All right, so starting off, we have Maine's gubernatorial race, which has been called for incumbent Governor Janet Mills, 356,201 votes over her Republican challenger, former Governor Paula Page, at 278,668. Sam Hunkler coming in well below that. And moving on to the Congressional District 1 race now, Shelley Pingree, the incumbent Democrat, winning that race with 204,721 votes. Her opponent, Edwin Thielander, with 125,345 votes there. All right, question one for Herman. Funds to repair and improve Pottle Field. That, quest, or that referendum passed with 2,100 votes. And another referendum here for Levant to borrow $900,000 for rescue pumps and equipment. That passed by a narrower margin of 781 votes to 523 no's. All right, well, several municipalities saw referendum questions on their balance that had big implications for residents and businesses. Matthew Jaroncic takes a look at two more of them. As the dust settles following Election Day, some folks in Bar Harbor, Benton, Clinton, and Fairfield can breathe a sigh of relief as their ballot questions passed. I'm delighted. Um, I'm grateful for the support and the participation of my fellow townspeople. Um, we definitely want to battle. MSAD 49 question one asks whether the school district should build a new school in Benton. In Bar Harbor, the question was whether they should put daily limits on cruise ship for passengers allowed in town. We have uh, the issue of three aging school buildings um, that have really reached uh, their life expectancy. For MSAD 49, voters gave the thumbs up for a new school. 
but they also voted no on a $1.8 million gymnasium and more bleachers for public use. Even as the school question passed by at least 400 votes, citizens are pondering this decision. And if I was currently on the school board, I'd be wondering <laughs> and trying to find out like an understanding why there was such a pushback against it. I mean, likewise, the Bar Harbor ballot question passed by a narrow margin of 500 votes. This limits the number of cruise ship passengers allowed in the town to only a thousand per day at a time. Just when when a large number visit all at once for a couple of short hours, the town becomes a circus. It's unmentionable. It's unpleasant. It's unsafe. It drives away all kinds of business. Looking at both sides of the issue, Kugelmeyer asked whether these decisions were worth it. The board of directors of MSA D49 and the superintendent has to ask themselves why they had such a small margin um, and are they going to be willing to uh, work to convince taxpayers to put the people in the buildings that they need to run all these programs that they said that they want to have in the new school. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, Governor Mills stopped at Becky's Diner on Commercial Street around 9 o'clock this morning to grab some breakfast. But first, she met with reporters outside. She told them she's now looking toward the next four years and even got emotional talking about her campaign. Before pouring her coffee and grabbing a booth, Governor Mills talked about how she liked meeting new Maine families along the campaign trail. She says she's planning to tackle problems like high grocery prices, gas prices, heating oil costs. And today she focused on her hope to decrease the number of Mainers who rely on heating oil and even got a little choked up talking about her supporters. Leading the state through a very, very tough time. Um, I just got to say the reception at the polls yesterday was as warm as I've ever seen it. Mills said President Biden called to congratulate her, telling her he looks forward to continuing working alongside, working with her. He also mentioned there had been no call yet from former Governor LePage, who has yet to officially concede the race. Meanwhile, women are making history in Maine with newfound representation at the Capitol. There are many people who will be firsts in the legislature while vowing not to be the last. Mal Meyer looks at the diverse group of people getting ready to serve the state of Maine. I'm going to be learning a lot of sort of new, new lingo. I'm going to be learning. Mana Abdi is ready to dive in on her new role, representing part of Lewiston as the first Somali American elected to the Maine legislature. She ran unopposed after her Republican challenger dropped out. It's daunting because there's no blueprint, right? There is Deka Dalak knows what it's like. I uh, realized that there is no voices that look like me in, in politics in Maine. The soon-to-be representative for part of South Portland became the first Somali-American mayor in the U.S. just last year. That ends in December, so she plans to continue her term as counselor while serving in Augusta. It, it is amazing, you know, to be able to be the voice of not only for Somali immigrants, but also immigrants in general. Together, they're part of a growing group of people of color in the legislature breaking barriers. What's been most important to me is not to be the last, to make sure I'm holding that door open. Jill Dusan will be the first black woman in the state Senate. She'll represent parts of Westbrook and Portland. That's familiar territory, having been the first black woman to serve on a city council in the state but it sounds like you're still nervous about oh, it. Oh, God, yes. All three women are excited to be part of this new representation while bringing with them a wide range of experiences. As immigrant community, as, as Somali, as a Muslim woman, we are not monolith. We do not all share the same ideas of how to fix things. They hope to tackle everything from the housing crisis to health care to rising heating costs. It's not about party. It's not about this and that. It's about the people. So let's just work for them. And that is exactly what I intend on doing. Fill my plate with your concerns, um, and I'll, you know, prioritize and figure out how I can work with others in the legislature to move some things forward. And that was Mal Maya reporting. Meanwhile, there were a lot of tired city and town clerks as well as poll workers across the state today. 
Many of them counted ballots well into the night last night as voter turnout was at a heavier was even heavier than expected in some places. Bangor City Clerk Lisa Goodwin says they put a lot of effort into getting ready. This year went really well for us. The setup and everything was good. You know, there'll be little things that we will tweak for the next big election. Goodwin says the poll workers were just fantastic. She says everyone will meet on Thursday to discuss various topics so they can get ready for the next election. So interesting to hear them already enthusiastic about that next election and, and great to see all of the volunteerism that came out of this uh, election as well. Uh, even, you know, high school students getting involved yeah. and stuff like that. Too, it seems so. a little crazy to be looking towards the next election when so many of us are just decompressing, yeah. you know, from yesterday as well with a few races, you know, still to be decided. But yes. a lot is now laid out in black and white. And mm -hmm. so folks are just looking to the future after yes. yesterday. Yeah, but hoping all of those volunteers, poll workers, and city yeah, clerks get the rest for the they next need. one. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, Russia's military says it's withdrawing from a key location in Ukraine, the only regional capital it seized during the eight month invasion. We'll have that story and much more when the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 comes right back. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Whether it's coaching kids soccer, volunteering at the local firehouse, helping out at the food pantry, or providing the children of our employees with scholarships, the New England Toyota dealers and the thousands of people we employ play a role in lifting up the community. We're proud to serve you and to be part of those things that benefit us all. Toyota. Let's go places. Check one, check two. The store's appearance may have changed throughout the years, but its dedication to our community and families has not wavered. We will still welcome you with a smile and top-notch service. If you need coffee, check. Tasty treats, check. Freshly made pizza, check. Or wine and spirits, check. Stop by and fill up your tank and check us out. ABC 7 and Fox 22, live at the Anna Shriners Festival of Trees on November 17th, a beautiful holiday live event sponsored locally by Cat Tracks LaGrange, your dealer for Hewitt Docks and Grasshopper Lawn Mowers. Leo and Sons Auto Repair, a family owned business providing fast and dependable auto repair services. And Jerry's Used Cars at two locations, Route 7 Corinna and State Street VZ. On Good Morning Maine, we start each day with a fresh look at what's happening and what's to come. All the information you need, fast and to the point. All while having a little fun, too. We want to set you up for your best day ahead. And you get a great start to your day by watching Good Morning Maine. <laughs> oh! Thursdays, what the Flatch is back. You don't see me complaining. Welcome to Flatch, Thursdays on Fox. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Widespread concern in the Republican Party after predictions of a red wave during the midterms failed to materialize. Fox's Christina Coleman has the latest. This is supposed to be a red wave. You guys, you were talking about us losing 30 to 50 seats and this was going to no, we're, that's not going to happen. A celebratory and defiant President Biden after a stunning midterm draw during Tuesday night's election. The president saying Democrats had a strong night, even as all signs point toward them losing the House majority. Ballots are still being counted, but whatever the outcome, the president doesn't seem worried. Regardless of what the final tally in these elections show, and there's still some counting going on, I'm prepared to work with my Republican colleagues. 
Republicans, however, are very concerned. Florida was the silver lining in what was otherwise a very, very dark night. Despite winning high-profile gubernatorial races in the battleground states of Florida, Georgia, and Texas, some Republicans believe narrow wins mean the party needs to rethink its messaging, which is mainly focused on inflation and rising crime. Many are also blaming so-called MAGA Republican candidates. By and large, I think the messaging uh, wasn't really where it needed to be, and the quality of the candidate, the quality of the individual that has to connect with the voter, um, that really does matter to folks at the end of the day. The House may be leaning red, but the Senate is still up in the air, and it could be weeks before we have a clear winner. Races in Nevada and Arizona are still too close to call, and Georgia's Senate race is heading to a runoff next month. Christina Coleman, Fox News. Meanwhile, Russia's military says it's withdrawing from a key location in Ukraine, the only regional capital Moscow sees so far during its invasion. Fox's Greg Palcott is in Kyiv with the latest. A potential major setback for Russia in its invasion of Ukraine. Russian officials announcing they're withdrawing all of their troops in and around the Russian-held southern city of Kherson and bringing them across a nearby river. Kherson is the only regional capital Moscow has taken in its eight-plus months of war. I understand this is a very difficult decision. At the same time, we will save the lives of our troops. Taking back Kherson has been a main objective of Ukrainian forces for months now. They've been slowly gaining ground. There have been signs of Russian military movement. But Ukrainian officials fear this could be a deadly trap. We cannot say absolutely that their statements correspond to their actions. It would be welcome news for the people of the region. They've either left or been evacuated by the Russians, having endured months of war. The situation is tense. The city is empty. Everyone is very nervous because the shelling has intensified. This is battles continue on several fronts. Russia targeting Ukraine's electric grid, knocking out power for millions. Mid talk by the U.S. and allies that Ukrainian President Zelensky should begin to think about talking with Russian President Putin. Don't tell that to former Ukrainian President Poroshenko as he and others rush supplies to the front line. But this is the price. Ukraine should pay to be free, to be democratic, to stop the crazy maniac Putin. On TV here, President Zelensky confirmed that something was happening around Harrison, but added, our emotions must be restrained. And in comments late today, President Biden indicated that Washington was aware of Russian problems, but then backed off a line that suggested it might lead to a compromise between Kiev and Moscow. Complicated stuff. In Kiev, Greg Palcott. Fox News. Meanwhile, back here in, at, in the U.S., folks in Florida are bracing themselves for a night of gusty winds and heavy rain as Hurricane Nicole hits. Fox's Lauren Blanchard has more from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Nicole battering Florida's coast as it strengthens into a Category 1 hurricane ahead of landfall. Nicole, with winds up to 75 miles per hour, set its eyes on Florida. Officials say the storm's massive size will impact the entire peninsula. Governor Ron DeSantis issuing a state of emergency for dozens of counties to help those still trying to recover from Hurricane Ian. Even with parts of Florida already seeing several inches of rain and a storm surge of up to five feet Wednesday, some Floridians say the Category 1 warning will not have them running for safer ground. Uh, no, no preps at all. You are not alone. Hurricane windows. Yeah. Part of the problem is when they hear Category 1, they think, uh, it's not a big deal. Right. You know, we can weather it. Earlier in the day, a beachfront property in Volusia County saw significant damage. The high winds and heavy rain swallowing up the entire backyard. It's not a matter of if something's going to collapse. It's a matter of when. This is really bad, and that's why we have a curfew and a mandatory evacuation, because as the night goes on, we're expecting terrible things to happen. Hurricane watches and warnings are in effect, and officials are asking people to stay alert. If you get a weather alert for a tornado, stay in the innermost portion of your home, away from windows, protect your head and body from debris with a blanket, sleeping bag, mattress, or even a bicycle helmet if you may have one. Forecasters say the storm is expected to weaken in the coming days, still bringing a ton of wind and rain. In Cocoa Beach, Florida, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. It's just so unbelievable to hear they're facing down another storm of any kind or any yeah. strength, let alone a Category 1 yeah. hurricane. Oh, my gosh. So much damage done by right. Ian. They're, you know, just beginning now to, to dig out and 
figure out how to move on and right. now, oh my gosh, they're getting hit again. I can't believe it's it. It's just unbelievable. And, you know, hopefully the sentiment is that, you know, people take it seriously, yeah. especially after these latest storms, you'd think that people would. And of course, there's a lot of connections between Mainers and uh, people in Florida. A Absolutely. Lot of, a lot of many, people many, who many. live there yep. too, especially uh, making that transition during this time of the year. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you know people down there, you know, it, it's never uh, a bad idea to stress uh, safety measures. Yeah, can't hurt to give them a call and say, please take care of yourselves. Absolutely. All righty. All right, we'll still come on Fox 22 News at 10. How a local Good Samaritan is making sure no children go cold this winter. And in sports, Maine football may have lost one of their best players for the season, but his replacement was pretty impressive in his first game. We'll be right back. Mix it up <laughs> with all new episodes of Call Me Cat. Yeah, boy. Thursday on Fox. Oh, great. My wireless bill just went up. Hmm. Should have gone with U.S. Cellular. They aren't raising prices on any of their plans. Seriously? Yeah, my price won't increase. Well, that is refreshing. I feel like everywhere you turn these days, prices are going up. Supply chain got us too. Don't get me started on the overhead cost. At U.S. Cellular, every plan for everyone is price protected. You know, I respect a female entrepreneur. U.S. Cellular, where every plan is price protected. At Bouchard Cleaning, rebuilding and restoring means more than just another job. To us, it's about bringing back cherished memories, restoring unforgettable moments in time, and giving hope when all was thought to be lost. For over 35 years, our mission has remained the same. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. Dot, dot, dot. Am I supposed to read the dot, dot, dot? The Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub is world-renowned for beautiful dining with a delicious view. Relax, unwind, and enjoy their inviting atmosphere and inspired cuisine from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. Experience their Wine Down Wednesdays with half-off bottles of wine. Simply call to make your reservation today. You'll love the tradition of the Lucerne Inn. back with cooler weather finally moving in local firefighters say they're concerned about the heating season ahead they say the high price of fuel could cause people to find alternative ways to try to heat their homes and that could be dangerous if they're not used properly our craig colson has more it was early halloween morning when flames erupted in neighboring homes in levant a terrible fire that claimed the lives of two people trapped inside leaving others injured Fire officials have since determined there weren't any working smoke detectors in the homes. Levant Fire Chief Eric Strout says that can often make a difference when fire breaks out. So test it, make sure the batteries work. We recommend it, you know, every 10 years, replace that detector. Um, but take the steps to make sure what does a smoke detector sound like, not when it's chirping, the battery's going bad, but when it's actually going off. Because some people never heard a smoke detector go off. And if you don't have any working smoke detectors, local fire departments and the Red Cross will often provide them. Chief Stroud is also concerned about the use of alternative heating sources like kerosene and space heaters. More people are expected to use them this year as they struggle with the high price of heating oil and other fuels. He says they should be kept away from items that can catch fire. And we should also check our heating sources to make sure they're working properly. So we remind people if you're using a wood stove for the first time, 
check it out, have your mm -hmm. chimney inspected. Chief Stroud says it's also important to keep entrances free of snow this winter. And we should also talk about a fire evacuation plan with people in our homes should a fire ever break out. Have a meeting place. Right? When you get out of your house, get a plan that where you're going to meet so when the fire department gets there, we can account for who's out of the house. And then we have an idea of how many people are left in the house or who we're actually searching for. This is Craig Colson reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. Important advice there. Well, members of Bangor High School hit the polls to do their civic duty, but in a different way, volunteering on Election Day. In a partnership between the school's National Honor Society program and Advanced Placement Government and Politics class, approximately 30 students had the opportunity to work as greeters, hand out ballots, and even register citizens to vote. It was really cool to see all the work that went into the election and just how many people it takes to keep everything organized. How many people it takes to make this system run smoothly. So it was really cool to see how that went. It's an operation. It's, it's, it's a nice, tight, uh, effective group they have over there who communicate well to get things done. The students we talked to said they came away with more information than what they started with, and some plan on volunteering their time at the next election. The local Good Samaritan is making sure no child in her community goes cold. Wanda Levitt has been donating handmade mittens to the Patricia A. Duran Elementary School for at least seven years, at, according to the school's principal, Melissa Davis. Levitt's most recent contribution to the school was a bag filled to the brim with 50 assorted gloves. We have a lot of students that, um, you know, they come to school and they may have um, home lives at home where that we're just not able to provide them with the clothing that they need for winter. So for those families that are really struggling, a pair of mittens can mean a lot. According to Davis, the Herman School is just one of a few that Levitt donates to, and those donations can last for years. Just a really thoughtful uh, way to give back to your community and definitely beautiful work too. I was just going to say a lot of thought and time probably went into making every pair of those mittens and I'm sure that those those youngsters who put them on are, are very grateful to have them as well. Well they're also different too yeah. like it's not like she made 50 pairs of, of the same exact pattern There's, right. they're all different they're all beautiful bright colors mm -hmm. nice thick looking materials so that's a lot of work. It really is yeah. so really cool to shine a light on that. Alrighty well a full five day is coming up stay with us. Temperatures are cooler today. No 60s, no 70s like we've been having in the past. But when are we finally going to warm up? I'll have all the answers coming up. Tomorrow morning on Star 97.7, Paul Dupuy has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 97.7 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 97.7. Come try one of our daily specials at Pat's Pizza in Hamden. Tuesday spaghetti or ziti with meatballs or sausage, only $5.50. Wednesday, large one topping pizza, only $8.50. Thursday, get an oven baked wrap for only $6. Friday is fish and fries for only $8. And Saturday, get a small one item pizza with a fountain soda, only $8. Bring the family to Pat's Pizza, 662 Main Road, North Hamden. Welcome to Rebecca's. For over 30 years, we've been serving our local customers in downtown Bangor, and we invite you to explore our historic shop. Rebecca's carries many main made products from local artisans. Perhaps you need a gift basket for your next celebration. We'll be glad to help. From blueberry ceramic dishes, gourmet foods featuring Stonewall Kitchen, fine wines to antique dishes and furniture. You're sure to find that perfect gift. We hope to see you soon at Rebecca's. For the first half of his life, Ed Bushy hid his inability to read from everyone until a crisis led him to confront his secret. So he called literacy volunteers at Bangor. He got a tutor and he learned to read. For the rest of his life, Ed promoted literacy to anyone who would listen. Ed's granddaughter, Kayla, was listening. Her grandfather's story inspired her to volunteer as a literacy tutor. Like Kayla, you can help us reach and teach people like Ed. The need is great, especially now. Become a tutor with literacy volunteers today. Tomorrow morning on Star 97.7, Paul Dupuy has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 97.7 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 97.7. A rivalry reborn. 
Cowboys, Hackers, Sunday on Fox. It's Wednesday, a day after our election day. Welcome back. Our main weather today is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studios in Penobscot Plaza in Bangor, providing custom inks by licensed artists for over 20 years. All right, so not much going on outside right now. We do have a little bit of snowfall, actually. I know, snowfall, that four-letter word snow is back. But it is mostly sticking around in Canada. A couple of flurries in the northern part of our state. But here in Bangor, we're in the clear. Not much going on. A good amount of cloud cover is still lingering in the area and that's going to continue the next couple of days until veterans day my type of holiday especially into the overnight hours we're going to get some good amount of rainfall it's going to actually pick up in intensity and really get heavy at times overnight on friday and then into saturday we're looking at around an inch of rainfall here in bangor and just north we're looking at one and a half, maybe even two inches plus in some locations. So bring out those umbrellas and get ready. There will be lots and lots of rainfall. Our muggy meter is also going to be rising. It's going to feel sticky and muggy outside. Of course, that rain in the area, it will not feel pleasant Friday into that Saturday time frame before it finally moves out and then it starts to drop. So by beginning of next week, look what happens. Dew points will be in the 40s, so that means it's going to feel very comfortable for us walking outside. Now, let's talk about temperatures. We just had the votes going on, but lots of red, orange, and yellow temperatures are moving up. That means warm temperatures. And then the blue coming in from the north. Cold air will be rolling in. Look at some of these temperatures right now. Four below zero. So lots of cold air will be moving in. Finally situating in the United States. We've been pretty much spoiled with all these 60s and uh, beach weather, 70s in the area. But today, different story. Upper 40s at that. A couple of mid 40s by the coast. So it felt much, much colder than it has been feeling the last several weeks. But hey, you remember those 60s and 70s not that long ago? They will be back Thursday, Friday, and then same thing into Saturday. Close to 70 degrees, and then a cold front comes in, cools us off on Sunday, 52 as a high, even colder on Monday into Tuesday. So bring out those jackets, prepare for these winter months because colder weather is upon us. Tonight, though, temperatures will be hovering in those mid-30s under a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow, a nice warm-up in temperatures, 60 degrees once again. So I would say beach weather, enjoy it while it lasts under a partly cloudy sky. And our extended forecast outlook does show those warm temperatures sticking around on Friday. Then rain starts to move in on Veterans Day, especially at night into Saturday. And temperatures will cool off starting Sunday and then once again into Monday. And a pretty distinct drop off on Monday there as well. Now we're dipping down into the 40s for our highs. Yep, so mm. slowly but surely we are inching down into uh, the colder territory, which we should expect this time of year. Mm -hmm. Getting some rain too uh, this weekend as well, but uh, it won't be long before <laughs> any precipitation will not be rain anymore. Translation, engage your layering skills. Yes, folks. exactly. All right, Eagle Sports <laughs> is coming up next. Stay with us. Did you know that Renewal by Anderson will replace your windows any time of the year and in any weather? Made with our exclusive Fibrix material, which is vastly superior to vinyl, never needs painting, and resists warping and bowing. We custom build your replacement windows in the USA and back them with the nation's best warranty. Call Renewal by Anderson for your free consultation. Don't miss this money-saving deal with great financing. Installation is always included. Call now. Autumn of Life Home Care is a great place to work. The team here provided me with all the opportunities and experience necessary to grow within the company, all while working around my busy college schedule. They provided all the necessary licensing and training. It truly was the job that kickstarted my career. Autumn of Life Home Care and Brewer is a licensed agency with personal support specialists. Let our compassionate, reliable, considerate caregivers make your life a little easier by providing assistance for you or your loved one. Autumn of Life Home Care. We focus on you. Apply today. 
your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground ground. Odland Road, Bangor. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available. Half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Steve Harvey powers the X team. If roles were reversed, what might a turkey do to you on Thanksgiving? Eat my drumstick. <laughs> Loaded with X Team confidence. Some men are shaped like what kind of nut? Nutcracker. <laughs> and X Team powers. Fill in the blank. Blank daddy. Hot dog. You'll love the X Team. Hot dog daddy. <laughs> on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Herman Motor Company. Whether you're looking for a new vehicle or to have your current vehicle serviced or detailed, Herman Motor Company has it all. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We will start on the gridiron. For Maine football, going has been a little tough lately. They dropped their third straight over the weekend, but they looked very good against a tough Rhode Island team. And one of the silver linings in that one was the way freshman Rohan Jones has filled the big shoes of Sean Bowman. Ryan Sudal has that story. It's been a tough couple weeks for Maine football. Their game against Rhode Island Saturday was their third straight loss. Really like how we you know, controlled the game for the most part. I thought in the second half we did not do that. Plus, in their game against Richmond two weeks ago, they lost their leading receiver, senior tight end Sean Bowman, for the season with a leg injury. Yeah, obviously, you know, that was tough. Um, you know, it's captain on this team, you know, a big leader. Obviously, you know, we use him a lot. But his long-term replacement is already making waves. Against URI, freshman tight end Rohan Jones caught his first career touchdown in his first career start. I motioned, uh, I faked the block on the rover and went uh, to the end of the zone for the catch. I knew at one point in the game, you know, it was going to come down to him making a play, and he did. A Montreal native, Jones first entered the program in January as a wide receiver. You know, he's had to learn two different positions in one year, so, you know, it's a lot to ask for him, but, you know, he's done a nice job with it. Pound for pound, probably one of our strongest guys on the team. Um, you know, it brings energy, consistency, you know, probably far beyond a lot of guys his age from maturity level. And Jones credits his early success with the player who he is succeeding. I consider him like a second coach because he's been here a while. He's been played a lot of football, and he's really a good mentor for me. So, I mean, just the physicality aspect of the position, I learned from him. Jones and the rest of the team will put that physicality to the test Saturday as they try to beat Albany for the eighth straight time. To be the top dogs in this year's battle with the Great Danes, the Black Bears are keeping their attention in-house. Uh, you know, they're a good team, a lot of good players, but, uh, you know, looking really focused on, on, uh, on ourselves this week. Uh, I think we're confident going in. We just need to keep working on ourselves, not to worry about what they do, just do what we do best and keep rolling against them. The Black Bears game against Albany takes place this Saturday at noon at Albany. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, Fox 22, ABC 7. Thanks for that, Ryan. Let's see if the Black Bears can get back on track this weekend with a game against Albany. That's their penultimate game, and then you have the battle for the musket. Let's stay with some football now. No games for the Patriots this week. They are on a bye, sitting at 5-4, and four, just over halfway through the year. A pretty good spot heading into the off week. Pats held their lone practice of the week on Wednesday. Just attendance-wise, David Andrews back at practice. That is a good sign for the O-line. Now, there's a lot to, let's say, discuss if you're the Patriots. While the record shouldn't really surprise anyone, 5-4, and four, it has been quite the first half of the year. Losing Mac Jones early, winning the next two games with rookie fourth-round pick Bailey Zappi, now winning two straight with Jones after that weird Monday night game. So some discussions surrounding the quarterback position, but Belichick says lately the way they've been taking care of the ball has been good to see. One of the best things we've done uh, in the last couple of weeks is take care of the football uh, in the passing game, especially we've had it stripped out. But in terms of the passing game, um, you know, we've kept the ball from being intercepted and, and uh, really from the defense getting their hands on very many of them. And, and that's a good thing. 
All right, next up is the Jets after the bye. All right, let's move on now. Any boxing fans out there, there is a big night this weekend for pro boxing in Maine and a chance to meet a Super Bowl champ while you're at it. The Portland Boxing Club is hosting an all-star night of boxing Saturday at the Expo. Doors open at 6, and there will be a meet-and-greet with former Patriots linebacker Rob Ninkovich and heavyweight champ Buster Douglas, who knocked out Tyson as a 42-1 to underdog. Just a little nugget there. There will be uh, six pro bouts, and headlining the show is the middleweight championship fight between Jason Quirk and Anthony Hines, and it's the 107th show in the Portland Boxing Club's history. We've done it from the grassroots up, the small shows, the bigger shows, and now these shows where we'll have 3,000 fans there. Um, we have such a great fan base in Portland. This is the right kind of town for, to support the locals. These are local guys that people have seen come up through the ranks as an amateur and now as a pro. So it's a great, uh, we have great community support. That should be a fun night down there. Let's move on to some hoops now. Celtics, hot start to the year for them. They're looking for their fourth straight victory and eighth overall. Pistons in town on Wednesday looking to take a victory on the road. These two will meet again on Saturday. First quarter, Jalen Brown from Jason Tatum. Two dribbles, pulls up, splashes the three. Celtics are up nine early. They're up three now. Moving on, and it's going to be former Maine Celtic Sam Hauser. He takes a three. That makes it a six-point lead for the Seas. And then with two minutes to go before the half, check out this play, this monster throwdown from Brown. The Seas just having their way tonight with Detroit. And then the second half was all Jason Tatum. He would rattle off 16 points in the first five minutes of the third quarter, just really shooting the lights out there. And the Celtics, they go on to win big, 128 to 112. So they have been starting the year pretty good down in Boston. Looks like they're picking up right where they left off from last year. New head coach, no problem. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. When Cat Tracks and LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to FoxBangor.com. Cat Tracks and LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolla Docks, with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danelle Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. Winning car accident cases is what we do. Check out a few of our big wins. I broke my leg and they got me $205,000. What did the twos do for you? I injured my back and they got me $300,000. What did the twos do for you? I broke multiple bones and Lowry & Associates got me $700,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22, 22. I heard about you. You're that smart kid. Young Sheldon, boy genius, an origin story. Yes, that's me. A small town boy. Young man. Yes, you. With supersonic hearing. Visionary vision. Cheeky little me one. You know you don't belong there. And a heightened sense of smell. You. Put your shoes back on. Young Sheldon, five times a week. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. You can't smell this. Yes, I can. This is an exciting U.S. team. They're young, they're hungry. Yo, Wes, did you pass that? Rolling it in, lays it off, cutting it back. What a finish! Thanks, man. Oh, 
Well, first look at Brendan Fraser and the Whale. Bad Sisters gets more episodes and more. Here's Fox's Ashley Devorkin with all the latest from the Hollywood Nation. Frazier makes a big transformation. The Garvey sisters return and Coco gets a new platform in the Hollywood Nation. Conan O'Brien is heading to Satellite Radio. The comedian and talk show host will launch his new Sirius XM channel, Team Coco Radio, on November 15th. It will feature interviews, comedy bits, and more from O'Brien's deep vaults. He's sucking the life out of her. The Garvey clan is coming back for more murder and mayhem. Apple TV Plus renewed its hit Irish dark comedy series Bad Sisters for a second season. Less than a month since the first season ended on October 14th. The show follows five siblings who become the target of an investigation by life insurers when their brother-in-law is found dead. Nicolas Cage has landed a new gig. According to Deadline, the actor will lead the new horror film Long Legs. Plot details have yet to be revealed. Cage will also produce the upcoming thriller through his production company, Saturn Films. And Brendan Fraser transforms into a 600-pound college professor in today's first looks. A24 released the official trailer to Darren Aronofsky's highly anticipated film, The Whale. Based on the award-winning play, Fraser stars as a severely obese English teacher in the last days of his life, attempting to reconnect with his estranged teenage daughter. It arrives in theaters December 9th. People are amazing. Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Well, a foul discovery at a Florida airport. The Transportation Security Administration says their agents caught someone trying to smuggle a gun wrapped inside a raw chicken. The agency shared photos of their find on their Twitter page and say the person was going through security, a security checkpoint at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Airport. In the tweet, the TSA says, quote, We hate to break it to you, but stuffing a firearm in your holiday bird for travel is just a waste of time, end quote. Florida has seen an increase in travelers bringing guns into Florida airports. So far this year, the TSA reported passengers have brought 700 guns into checkpoints, including 120 seized at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport alone. Hmm concerning on multiple levels. All right, well, the nation's largest retailer is now offering Black Friday deals to help customers save during inflation. Holiday deals began online Monday, and those who love to scarf up deals in person can grab the savings starting Wednesday. Some of the tech deals include a $1,000 WeMax projector down to 539 bucks, a Shark Easy robot down from 449 to 258, and Apple Watch Series 3, about $50 off that priced now at $149. So some good deals there. And if you're an early shopper and like to get things out of the way so you're not stressing yeah. in the last couple weeks, maybe not a bad idea to step out and grab some deals. You know, I, I really enjoy... Anywhere, really, not just Walmart. I like how the, uh, you know, the whole thing attitude around Black Friday has shifted now. Yeah. We don't have these massive crowds leaving as soon as their Thanksgiving dinner is over. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of extended into, like, week-long or weeks-long um, savings, which I think is, is personally better for, for most Well, and people. you have a lot of stores closing on Thanksgiving or the exactly. day after as well. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. Take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone. For more local news coverage, switch over to our sister station, ABC7, right now for ABC7 News at 11. $7.8 million. That's how much I made home sellers in the past two years. Planning on selling? I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one, gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. They needed help, so they asked for volunteers. In 24 hours, I was at the front. And the captain said, well, we're going to be next. It'll be here in two minutes. We saw the torpedo coming in, and it hit us right in the middle. Big thump, but no big explosion. And all I could hear was about a thousand whispers of, oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you so much. I looked at the door, and out comes all these women with those beautiful uniforms on. I think a light bulb went off in my brain because I thought, I think that would be for me. Who is it that's still living that was in World War II? I'm one of the youngest. This Veterans Day, we honor Maine's World War